Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Isaac Zablocki. I'm the director of the Israel Film Center at the Marlene Meyerson JCC Manhattan, and I'm really excited to be here to lead this program um, presented by the Atlanta Jewish Film Festival. Um, this is such an important program at this time. We are standing here just a little more than a month since the horrific events of October 7th that has really impacted the whole world, um, but of course, specifically everyone in Israel and um, the film industry specifically. And I want you to know as the audience, you are a part of actually um, bringing this back to life. Um, and after October 7th, the amazing Israeli cinema um, has really been shuttered and it is so important right now to support Israeli film and, and to help bring Israeli film back into um, the public's eye as well, amongst all the other great causes to do with Israel. And we're honored to be here with an amazing panel of some of the diverse leading industry members um, in the Israeli film industry. Um, we're going to start. Um, we are here with uh, Noah Regev, um, who is the from the Israeli from the Israel Film Fund, which is the leading funder of Israeli films. And you have seen their logo probably on every good Israeli film that you've seen. And um, and is uh, in the past also the head of the Jerusalem Film Festival and the Jerusalem Cinematheque. Hi, Noah. Good morning. How are you? Hi, Isaac. Good morning. Good to be here. Thank you for being here. Um, Yariv Moser is here as well. Yariv is an accomplished director and producer who um, uh, you've probably seen Ben Gurion epilogue is uh, one of his films um, and many more. Yariv, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you so much. And uh, Hedva Goldschmidt. Hedva Goldschmidt uh, runs GoTo Films, which is really one of the leading uh, distributors in Israel that brings many of the films, um, not only throughout Israel, but um, to the world, especially to the Jewish film festivals like Atlanta. Um, hi, Hedva. Shalom, everyone. Thank you, Isaac. So first of all, my first question to you all is, how are you doing? How's, how's everything? How have you been impacted? I will start uh, um, in saying that uh, on October 7th, we uh, lost uh, my um, um, the son of our cousins. It took almost two weeks to understand that uh, he died heroically while saving people. He was one of the young people in the party. And we lost uh, uh, our company, um, um, Shelley, brother-in-law. He was also... Uh, um, a soldier at the party and uh, unfortunately we also lost one of the young talented filmmakers we worked with Yaha Wiener um, that uh, was killed in Kfar Gaza in his home while saving his wife filmmaker Shaili Atari and uh, uh, their one month's baby uh, and uh, a month afterwards Yaha films are now on every festival, uh, on the site of the New Yorker, in left cinemas, full houses. And we feel it's a very small uh, contribution to tell the story of so many heroic people. Excuse me, there is noise here, so many heroic people. Um, that stories will, will be told uh, for many years. So we are, uh, we're in pain. But uh, I feel that we are very strong. I have, out of five children, three of them are now in the army, um, including my daughter that just got engaged and she's in the army and her future husband in the army. So it's like <clears throat> a little bit out, out of time and zone. Um, but feel really strong, the, the love and, and care that we get from you, the Atlanta Film Festival, from all our overseas friends, and we thank you for that. It's really a support for us. Thank you, Hedva. And of course, um, uh, the audience is going to see the boy very soon. Um, Noah, how are you? I'm heartbroken, like all of us here. I have a young child, two years old, and it's his second time spending uh, quite long hours in the bomb shelter. Um, and on the other hand, uh, there's a lot of hope in seeing how the Israeli society is uh, so devoted. People are just doing everything they can to help one another. 
in these times. And if I look at the uh, specifically at the uh, film industry, it's incredible to see how everyone is recruited to the to the effort. Some of the people just go and help uh, agriculture in the south. Others devote their time to to uh, to document the tra the, the tragedy. Um, since October seventh, the Israel film industry as a whole, including prominent directors, Yariv is here. Also, uh, directors of fiction films such as uh, Joseph Siedel, Ari Folman, Hagai Levy, all of them are dedicated significant efforts to documenting the people. And um, there is also a website where you can see all the testimonies. I, and I feel that in this very act of documentation, there is a sense of containment and humanity that, that is so needed right now. So much pain around us. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Um, Yariv, Yariv, tell us, how, how are you doing? Um, well, I'm trying to avoid asking this question and, and, and answering it because I don't have uh, an answer to it. You know, it's, um, it's not a situation in which I've ever imagined that I will be. Um, long nights without sleep, already got used to it. And from the moment the war began, I couldn't stay in my house. I think it's an instinct that I have for many years um, to grab my camera. But in this situation, I don't really have a camera, but to do something. And um, I'm happy I'm devoting myself into two uh, efforts. Um, I'm doing a documentary film about the massacre at the festival, the Nova uh, Music Festival, the party, as people call it. So that is one effort which I'm doing from uh, two days after uh, the massacre. I was already there um, filming in, in the site, although it was um, there was a blockade. You couldn't go in, but I had um, an army. The army uh, gave me support. And on the other hand, I'm doing a secret um, effort. I I'm... I volunteered to the reserves of the IDF and I'm filming some of the secret background. Um, I don't know how to call it, but let's say operation rooms that are happening behind the scenes of uh, the efforts connected. I will just say, because I will not be able to say more than that to the hostages uh, in Gaza. So hopefully one day this film will be able to go out and show people in Israel and around the world, uh, what is going on just now as we speak uh, to bring those people back home. Um, and so in a way, I'm doing two films at this point. And let me just add to what Yari just said that at least for me, the main mission right now is bring those people home. That should be the main mission. We are all, we can't sleep at night. Think, I mentioned my, my young son, but I, the reason I mentioned it was to say that it's unimaginable that there are children there in Gaza right now, held hostage. For sure, um, this is uh, needs to be a priority and needs to remain on the agenda in Israel, in the world, everywhere. This is the number one priority: is bringing home the literally hundreds of um, of uh, hostages that have been taken from Israel. Um, and. and yeah. Another thing that I feel that we're doing with all our connection in the world. Uh, so first, it's amazing that when it's the connection is personalized. So even people in Japan or China that are colleagues, suddenly they know someone from Israel and sometimes they do not know what is happening. And it's so far. And for us, I think that it's very important to to address everyone that there is no context to what happened on October 7 and that the fact that children and women are now hostages in Gaza and the fact of the massacre, you can still be, stay pro-Palestinian, whatever. We don't care about anything, but this is something that really against humanity, it, sh it should not be con contextualized, sorry for my English, and, and that the world, like every friend in the world, they have to fight this fight uh, for the release of the hostages. And uh, this is something that we're trying to do on a daily basis. I but agree with Hedva. And unfortunately, there is a disturbing silence, um, I can say, at least in our small world of 
of the global film industry. Many people maybe, you know, feel bad for the situation, but most of them don't stand out and say this is something that must be stopped. And that's why I say again, raise it on the agenda, post about it, get it out there, get it to your friends, get it to your your politicians that you might uh, have a connection to. Um, this is crucial. And I know there's a lot of people working on the ground, um, sometimes in a grassroots kind of way to help make sure that this becomes number one on the agenda. Of course, there's so much going on in a time of war. Um, I have to say that one of the things that strikes me the most is for the last um two decades of Israeli cinema really reaching the international world in such a profound way. The, I, I always found that the beauty of it was that Israel moved past war. It used to be that Israel was associated with war films, and that's that was what Israel was known for. And um, Israel was really able to present the day-to-day -day life. And, um, and really, I always felt and always saw and always presented Israel as a normal place. And I, I like to, to say that this is this somehow comes as a complete shock. It goes against all this normality that has been created over the last few decades. I want to know how you feel this is impacting the storytelling and the filmmaking in Israel. I don't think we ever was a normal place, but it's <laughs> nice that you think. Uh, but of course, uh, it's, you're doing other Israeli film festival and we love working with you every year. And suddenly some of the film, you feel awkward. Should I, should I uh, uh, screen them or should I? I'm not. We, we now have like uh, BBC Arabic wants to buy films from us. They are buying Yariv film on Golda and they want to buy another film about collaboration between Palestinians and Israeli uh, on health. Uh, it's a film that Noah Regev, you, you screened it, Gvula Ke'ev, Border of Pain, when you were the director of the Jerusalem Film Festival, and they want to screen it in Iran now. And the producer now, he's like very left-wing, very open-minded, but suddenly he said, maybe I need to stop. Should I screen my film now on BBC Persian version or not? So um, I think that we are all united now, all the filmmakers and... Uh, um, just to 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 fight for the voice of Israeli people, still fight for peace, for inclusion, for all the great values that we have. But but we understand that we are in a war, and we cannot hide it, and we are not awkward about it. We say, okay, we're at war, and this is what is uh, important. I I think it's a critical moment in the future of the country in that sense too. The story about what happened on October 7th uh, is taking shape as we speak. And will it be a story of hate and darkness or also of hope and, of course, pain? And uh, the cultural community in Israel plays a, a central part in shaping this narrative. And this is something that I think about a lot. I mean, Yariv, I, I guess that as, as probably the first filmmaker that deals <laughs> with what happened, in a cinematic way, you are already in it, but many, many filmmakers are will follow you soon with big questions of how to tell the story. Hopefully. Um, For sure. I, I want to relate to your question from a different angle, which I'm asking myself since the day of the war. I think that Israel will, the moment will the war will end, um, hopefully soon, um, in good consequences for Israel and bringing the hostages back home. Um, we will ask ourselves questions. Uh, how did we got to this point in which such a big surprise happened? And uh, where were we? And is it the fault only of the, um, you know, security people, army, intelligence and everything? I think also as cultural people, we should ask ourselves questions as well. Where have we been looking at the situation um, have we dealt enough with um, understanding what is in front of us, Hamas? Did we do films? Let's say I would think only about Fauda, you know, uh, uh, explaining what is Israel facing um, behind the border. OK, so but even Fauda didn't deal exactly with with this. And this is the only example I could think of. So where was the Israeli cinema in showing what is the consequences of having such a re regime next to us and um, for almost uh, 20 years. 
this is a question that we we must ask ourselves. We were always identifying with the pain of the Palestinians, but um, have they been identifying with with us or were they understanding what are the consequences of Hamas ruling them? Um, are we always in a position that we need to be critical towards ourselves? Uh, many, many questions, which I think as a community, which is a very left wing, uh, some of us are radical left wings, which I sh think are the, the ones that need to ask themselves open questions of where have they been in the last uh, 20 years that led to this um, event? Were they expecting this event to come? Um, this is the way I've seen it. So, and I'm not losing my faith in a two-state solution and in, uh, in, in, in peace with the Palestinian people. But yet, I think that we should ask some questions about it. I think that this is these are very important statements, and I think I think and in, indeed, and I, I give hope. I think for twenty years, everybody, um, at least twenty years, if not longer, maybe since uh, nineteen seventy three, um, Israel has been aiming to try to be a normal, safe place, and kind of um, definitely not recognizing some of um, the the threats that clearly existed. And and I applaud. Last night we screened here. Seven Blessings, Sheva Brachot, which is Israel's um, entry to the academy, which is a family story. Um, people, that's what people want to focus on. We want to be normal. We want to focus on our families. We want to, um, you know, this is something completely universal. And I think Israeli cinema has been able to speak universally and has had such success around the world, not because of its of its politics, but really more so because of it showing its humanity, which um, which came across really through every film that we have presented from Israel. Um, I want to ask how what's going on with the Israeli film industry? How has the Israeli film industry been impacted since October 7th? I need to say a few words because I need to go. I was supposed to be at uh, Doc NYC and visit you personally because uh, tomorrow we have the screening of the three of us in this beautiful festival. And it's a film really about a family, uh, about compassion and about love. Uh, unfortunately, I'm in a hospital setting after a small surgery, but it was really important for me to come up here and say first, thank you. Thank you, Isaac, and thank you, Kenny, and thank you, Amy, and all the Atlanta Jewish Film Festival team. It's so important that you're giving us a uh, space and, and to hear our voices, but we feel you every day. So many festivals are now screening more and more Israeli films, and we get support from everyone. And uh, and I, I, I would just say that, of course, uh, in one way where it's like COVID, everything stops in Israel, and a lot of... Um, and a lot of volunteering. And, you know, my employees, for example, are going now and they are, rimonim. Uh, they are working as agriculture and we are so happy about it and we don't care and we will be okay and we will survive this because we're strong and as a nation, we fight all the time. We're very loud, but in, in like, um, um, when needed, we are really, really united. And and what I wanted is uh, to say thank you because we feel that you are also part of this um, unity and we're getting a lot of invitations for films and uh, I know we will be okay. And there's a lot of bravery stories that probably a live and talented filmmaker like him uh, will tell. And please excuse me that I'm not staying. And, and uh, of course, uh, we will keep in touch and be with you and uh, together soon. Thank you, Hedva. Thank you for everything you do. So back to, to the question, how has the Israel film industry been impacted? Well, it's almost uh, completely frozen. If you uh, watch television nowadays, there is news 24-7 in all challenge <laughs> channels. Of course, all the film productions are frozen for now. A lot of people are, are going and documenting the, the reality, but it will take a while to to rethink, to think about it, to 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 create around it films. And I do hope that we can assist the Israeli filmmakers to engage in in in, in ex those accelerated process of of of, of uh, creating projects that reflect and raise questions, as as Yariv mentioned, questions about the current situation and what led to it. 
I personally think that we have um, also a responsibility upon our shoulders. Um, we discovered that the world is not really believing us, which is uh, shocking. Uh, we, hear the, we, we hear, we see the protests of um, uh, people all around the world, the Western world. Um, I see the people that are ripping off the signs about the hostages in uh, in New York City, in London, in, in Paris, um, in America. How come? Who are, who are those people? Uh, how come we do not get the full support of what Israel is doing now? Our enemy is Hamas. It's not the Palestinian people. How come people do not understand it? How people? How come there is such a big support to from the river to, to the sea? Uh, Palestine should be free. If that is the situation, then we are losing big time in terms of media awareness, in terms of um, the, the youth in America understanding the situation. Where will we be in 20 years if they do not understand the uh, right for Israel to exist? And I think that we as the, peop the cultural people, if we want to have um, a space to work in and to um, to be able to continue and, and express ourselves, we must take this responsibility also upon our shoulders uh, to explain people what is Israel, um, what are the Palestinians, and what will be the solution to this region. Um, of course, I want to have peace here, but if we want to have peace and still have Israel exist, there are some types of solutions, but not destroying the state of Israel is part of them. So this is something that I see as part of our responsibility. I, I completely agree. And I believe that it's actually the filmmakers responsibility in some ways to tell these stories and, and to capture these stories. The, we filmmakers in some ways are the modern historians that are, are really bringing up and especially as artists bringing up sometimes questions that, that push. It's the done. I can't promise you, Isaac, it's done. Everyone is on it right now. Everyone is shooting testimonies and it's beautiful to see how, Everyone is there, all the filmmakers. This is this is so crucial in getting the story out there um, in so many different formats. It does not only on the big screen, but actually also also on the uh, on our phones as we um, hear these stories and tell these stories and and hopefully in the bravest and and in uh, the the highest of qualities as we know comes out of Israeli cinema. What should we be doing? What should the American community be doing? In the current situation, we need all the help we can in 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 making sure that those uh, horrific anti-Semitic uh, uh, waves will will that we all stand against them. Uh, and if we look at the future, that then I would think that any assistance in re-energizing the film industry and helping us create new projects and provide cinematic expression to to those difficult events is would be very helpful i join the words of uh, of noah i mean um it is our responsibility jews are all around the world to stand unite against uh, those voices that are calling against israel the existence of israel i mean we can fight for different ideologies we can we can be left and right we can have different opinions but there is one thing that you we should be unanimous about it and that is the existence of israel in 1948 as a jewish country if that is not something that we all agree upon then we have a problem here and we need to be fighting this together this is the way i see it uh today strongly um yeah. I'll throw in there also the importance of really seeing these films, the impact of film. When you think about it, Israeli cinema has reached millions and millions of people around the world, people buying buying tickets from every film, from, you know, the band's visit um, to to other like, you know, great hits over the years, small documentaries, Ben Gurion epilogue, which went to every Jewish film festival literally around the world. Um, it has reached more people than synagogues will ever reach. And it reaches beyond the Jewish community. 
And I feel that everyone should be taking their friends to watch Israeli cinema, to watch them at home, to watch them think about Fauda, how many people around the world have have seen these stories and get to see both the humanity and the perspectives of Israelis um, through these stories and what an amazing, powerful tool that is. So at a time when, unfortunately, I, I think Israeli films are not uh, being seen as much in Israeli cinemas, obviously, at this moment, um, it's important for the world to be able to see these films. Yariv, we're honored to be able to present here a short clip from this amazing project that you've been working on um, right now that you've put together. I want to just mention to the audience that uh, to give trigger warnings, this is really devastating um, footage that you're about to see um, put together in an important and beautiful way, but um, uh, um, definitely not uh, for those um, who... Um, 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 get impacted by these things. Um, this is uh, real footage from the party that uh, was attacked. Yariv, could you give us a quick intro of the project? So it's it, it's a teaser to the film I'm I'm doing now about uh, the massacre at the festival Nova Music Festival on the seventh of October. And uh, just to give the proper credits, it's uh, the documentary channel in Israel Hot Eight together with uh, Sipul Studios, which is an Israeli company collaborating with MGM Studios in Hollywood, which I truly appreciate the fact that they came on board on such an important film and uh, Full Well seventy three in uh, the UK. So as you said, yes, there are hard images there, which were important for me to put inside. Um, all authentic, didn't touch anything, but um, I would accept this warning that you just said. So let's see it. Imagine that a bunch of people have surrounded you and they're about to start slaughtering you. The ones who left first died on the roads. We decided to ditch the car and just run for our lives. She's flying behind my head. If I was in those bathrooms, I might not be here today. As they were throwing in grenades, he would keep picking them up and throwing them out. There were 11 grenades thrown in. He threw out eight. I'm 
va être pas vous d'accord pour rien. Un peu de... So many dead. It's unexplained. So, uh, um, the production is in its uh, research and starting to film in a few weeks. I'm gathering a lot of authentic footage from those who survived this. Um, I still didn't start interviewing because I do respect the fact that people are still in trauma. They're not even in post-trauma. They're still in trauma. They're, they're still mourning about their uh, loved ones. And um, so... What I'm doing now is only gathering the footage and the fact that yeah. it is a generation of youngsters. They're 20 years younger than me and Noah. Those youngsters held their phone while they were in uh, life danger situations. They took their phone and they were filming themselves in this situation. I wouldn't think of such a thing, but this is what they have done. So just to gather all this footage, amazing. And of course, on the other hand, those massacred terrorists were filming during those horrible things that they were doing. So um, I, I was also in this IDF screening, closed screening of the footage that, was, uh, that they got from all the uh, Hamas terrorists. It's horrible. And some of it is is in my hands as well. And um, I feel that I will need to show it, you know, so people will believe really what happened there. Yariv, I am in chills here. This That footage was heartbreaking. I can't believe you managed to put this together so quickly, what you have there. And it's it's such an important story to tell and I think has such a um, human um, perspective on all of this to you capture that atmosphere of the party and who these people were and what they were doing there when this horrific action happened and I, I'm I'm truly in tears here um, thank you for for sharing this um, I have to thank- join you Isaac I have to say as you said the filmmakers are the modern historians and we have the most incredible filmmakers Yariv and other people in Israel we are looking forward to see how they will handle this tra- terrible tragedy. It's just meeting those people, hearing their horrific stories. I must say, those young people survived situation in which I heard only in Holocaust stories. This is, to be honest, and I did recently a film about the Holocaust, about uh, Eichmann and his lost tapes. And I felt I'm feeling as if I'm repeating the same story. Oh, once again, people faced situation. Maybe it's not the time to share the stories that I'm hearing every day now. It's insane, unimaginable situations that you wouldn't believe the stories you will hear um, of people that survived this massacre. Not only, of course, in the party, but all over the area. But uh, the party is, I think, the most um, vicious. And, you know, people that came to celebrate and dance and, you know, music and everything, youngsters. And they had to feel the most to uh, experience this evil is horrific. You're using cinema in the best way possible. It is such a powerful tool. This is a weapon. This is a way to to really win this war and uh, make sure that the world hears our voice. So thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for sharing this with us. And um, of course, of course, um, our community is there with you and here to support and know that this is um, not just about uh, about what's going on right now, but this is going to be a long-term discussion. Um, and, and thank you for being a part of this. Mm-hmm.